Hello there, this is Robin Norgren. I'd like to welcome you to today's walking meditation. The focus today will be on what is inevitable. Let's take a few moments to bring our breath. into our thoughts, heart, prayer, centering of our soul. It is in the breath that we have life. God says he wants to give us life, and not only life, that we endure, but that we value and appreciate. That's part of what's so special about these walking meditations. With the climate of the world today in 2020, sometimes you don't know what to think. Sometimes you don't know what to feel. There have been many that have said writing is a good process to have because then when you write, you know what you think. And for some, that works very well. But for others, it might just be a matter of just walking, breathing, praying, and waiting. Take a deep breath in. Hold for just a moment. Slowly exhale. Take another breath. Hold. Slowly exhale. what is inevitable. When I was a little girl, I used to hear what was inevitable was death and taxes. Did you hear that? When you were a little girl or a little boy? Or just little? As you start to learn and grow, other things feel inevitable. Heartbreak. Sadness. Disappointment. letting go. Breaking apart. Betrayal. For many, many years, that's how life felt for me. Sad. One disappointment after another. Taught me not to try too hard. Taught me that everything's going to disappoint you. Taught me that everyone will let you down at some point. Even parents. Dare I say, even children. So many times when you hear your children disappoint you, they think, oh, that's because you were trying to live through them. No, no, friends. 
What if you want the best for them? What if you let them go? What if you let them go for over a decade? And they still don't come back. What then? Train up a child in the way they should go. But they are, when they are old, they won't depart from it. Those are nice words. They will rise up and call you blessed. Here's some more nice words. And I'm not saying they're not true. I'm saying perhaps your timeline for that thing you thought was inevitable, the being blessed, the training paying off, those things are a little outside of your control. This year I decided I wanted to reframe what is inevitable. What is inevitable is I can choose who I stay connected with. What is inevitable is friendships can last if you pick the right people. What is inevitable is God has always brought people into your awareness that maybe you would not have picked. But there they are. Showing up for you. Showing up for you. Not making you feel less than. Not making you feel like you need to apologize all the time or you should have said more. Or you, you must have did something wrong. You know, ghosting. <laughs> for no reason. I know you know what that is like. It's our new world. What I chose to do is not focus on the inevitable, which is many, maybe people will ghost you, but what is inevitable is God always brings these people into your life bless you, to encourage you. And I found for myself, I don't need 20 people. I need one. I'm the oldest of four children. And the way our household was, on the one hand, we were always told, we're going to need each other. You always need your siblings. But ironically, both my parents had numerous siblings, six, seven siblings. And in front of us? I mean, we saw them on holidays, but we never really saw more than maybe one of them. So here you are telling your children, you're going to need each other. What you're showing us is you don't need anybody. And so for years, as the oldest, I pined for my siblings to want to have connection. But they chose isolation like my parents did. And because we were all two years apart, by the time number three and number four came along, I bought into that isolation, separation. And I left home when I was 15. So I didn't really know my youngest sister, or even my brother, 
because I left so early. So, really, the only thing I knew about those two were almost what you would call just reports, right? Almost like rumors. I hadn't experienced them, their personalities, so you might hear something from a friend or a relative and you just go, eh, I guess that's how they are. Well, five years ago, my youngest sister, good morning, decided to go to Sri Lanka to live. And that was kind of like her MO, like she never really stuck around. She really was kind of a free spirit, so I didn't really think anything of it. And since I had no real heart connection with her, it didn't really phase me. I mean, we'd engage with each other. And in those engagements, it always seemed like we were so different from each other. So, she'd been there about five years this year. And suddenly I got an email from her. Is this your email address? Right? Now, let me tell you my perspective on when I get emails like that, because it's happened numerous times with friends, old friends in the past. I would get an email like that, and it would mean they'd started some new B2B, I guess you'd call it, uh, marketing businesses, you know, you know the ones I'm talking about. So it was to somehow slip me onto an email list that I didn't ask for, or how they would pepper something into the conversation to sell me something. So that's how I, that's how I thought. That's what I thought when I saw the email. But I thought, okay, it's my sister, you know, I'll go ahead and say, you know, yes, good to hear from you. Because I should say, in, in the five years that she'd been gone, maybe we'd, in passing, checked on each other because there was a there was an incident in Sri Lanka to check to see if she was okay. But birthdays, Christmases, things like that, we just never even really connected in that way either. So, get this email, which then turns into, there's an app called WhatsApp. So then we started messaging each other back and forth. Just about little things that were going on in our lives. You know, I thought, oh, this is nice. A nice way to stay connected. One day I listened to her message and she said, I just want to apologize. For all the years that I didn't want to do community. I, I didn't know what that was you were asking for. And she continued on with different things along that line. And I thought, oh my goodness, all these years, all my family members, I just thought, I must be doing something wrong. But here she was in a span of 10 minutes, basically unpacking our family history, starting not with our parents, but even with our grandparents, of just this complete opposite of what family was. It was not connection in any way. No one, no one wanted that. Everyone wanted to be an island unto themselves. Even with having s multiple siblings, still there's no real connection and no real understanding of how to do it. So here's my, under, here's my younger sister giving me this gift, this awareness that I wasn't asking for too much. I tell you, friends, I did not think, when I think about what is inevitable, what was not on that list, was that I would reconnect and have a relationship with my youngest sister, who I can honestly say I didn't even really know. And can I tell you, like, within a matter of a month, she feels like my best friend. Can you believe it? 
someone thousands of miles away feels more connected to me. Than really anyone. So as we come to the conclusion of this walking meditation, I want you to think about what is inevitable. I want you to sit, walk, lie down in Shavasana, and ask God about something surprising that's coming. And perhaps you're even in the middle of it and you don't really understand, or maybe you're even afraid to acknowledge what it is. What is inevitable? Because I wouldn't have put this on the list, friend. What is inevitable is that I would have a fantastic relationship with my baby sister. Gives me hope. We're in the middle of the COVID pandemic. I live in Arizona. So in July of 2020, we just really have no answers here. But I can't even reframe that until I really understand that you really don't know what is inevitable.